welcome and thank you for joining. Uh, today we're having a presentation by one of our Senior Planet sponsored athletes. Uh, this is a group of individuals that were selected when Senior Planet put out a call for adults age 60 and older who are excited about fitness and wanted to share their experiences about accomplishing their wellness goals. So we have Kathy Malloy. She's 73 and she's an active participant in CrossFit workouts, golf, and pickleball. After receiving a diagnosis of osteoporosis in her late 50s, Kathy started lifting weights to increase her bone density and her overall strength. Today, she's going to share her story and she'll lead us in some warm ups and some cool down movements. Kathy, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nicole. Um, Thank you everyone for joining me. This is gonna be a fun, a fun session, I think. Um, as Nicole said, I got diagnosed with uh, osteoporosis uh, with wrist for fracture in my lower spine in my late 50s. I'm now 73. Um, in addition to the medication, they asked, uh, told me that weightlifting might be helpful. Uh, my son is involved in CrossFit and um, so I decided to try CrossFit. Um, a bit nervous, but uh, went anyway. And um, I found that I really, really in, enjoyed it. Uh, I wasn't lifting heavy weights in the beginning, um, but they showed me the process. And I found that I really enjoyed being challenged with um, strength training, lifting heavy weights. I got a lot of satisfaction out of that. and. Um, the actual workouts of the day, they change every day. And, and I enjoyed that also, because if you go to the gym, uh, you tend to pick uh, exercises that you like and uh, or equipment that you're comfortable with, but you really don't do some of the exercises that you should be doing. So every day is different. We, um, we touch every section of our bodies throughout the week. So I really, really enjoy that. Um, so I started CrossFit and um, there's three things that I really enjoy about CrossFit. Uh, one, it's scalable. I'm 73 years old. I'm, I'm not gonna be lifting those heavy weights like you, you perhaps see on TV, but I do like the functional fitness of um, CrossFit and, and they can be modified or scaled to whatever your ability is. And then you're still challenged. You're still getting a very good workout based on your ability and where you're at at a certain time. The second thing I like about a CrossFit is that they have certified coaches. So if you're you know, doing something incorrectly, they're gonna stop you, show the, the appropriate way, which I really, in like because it makes me feel safe and it minimizes the risk for injury. I mean, you can get injured getting out of a chair if you don't do it appropriately. Well, the same holds true for CrossFit workouts or whatever you're doing. If you don't do it correctly, you risk getting hurt. And the third thing and the most important one I, I feel is before we do anything, before we do any um, strength training, or the workout of the day, we do warm ups and we do cool downs. Warm ups are so important. They get you ready mentally and physically to do whatever activity you're going to be doing. They bring, you know, lots of oxygen into your heart, your lungs, uh, you know, to prep your body for the activity you're going to be doing. And you're going to be stronger and you're going to be more efficient because you've got the fuel that you need to do whatever it is you're doing. Um, and it just uh, just sets a tone for the rest of the session, I feel. So one of the most frequent excuses or reasons that folks don't do um, warm-ups or cool down is that they say they don't have time. So I took it upon myself to go onto Google and look specifically for warm-ups and cool downs that take less than five minutes. And I found a bunch, I found a bunch. And um, I selected uh, a few that I wanna demonstrate today. I picked um, some warm ups and cool downs for pickleball and golf today. And I have two others <clears throat> that I'll show at another time. So 
without further ado, why don't we just start showing you some of these warm up exercises for golf? All right, so here we go. I just need to move this box. And the only piece of equipment I need for golf warm ups is a golf club. And I think I need to do this so that you can see me. Yeah, that's better. So it's a golf club and I'm going to, there's two things that I'm going to use it for. One, to show you the exercises, but two, I'm going to use it for balance. All right. So the first warm up that we're going to do is called hip swings. And basically you stand tall, feet shoulder width apart and using my trusty golf club for balance, I'm just going to swing my leg out like this across my body for the count of five, four, five. Other side, hip straight out, and we're just gonna swing it. One, two, three, four, five. First exercise out of the way. The next one they call hip openers. And again, using my trusty golf club for balance, you would bring your knee to 90 degrees and then just swing it out to the count of five, two, Three, four, five. Other side, 90 degrees. One, two, three, four, five. Third, second exercise, done. Now the third exercise is called a, a squat. We're gonna modify it a little bit by putting that golf club over our head like this, arms nice and straight. And it doesn't have to be a deep squat, but we're gonna do five. One, two, three, four, five. Third exercise, done. We're moving right along. And as you can see, it doesn't take a lot of time. The next one is called a cross body punch. And again, we're gonna stand tall. All of these exercises are done standing. We're gonna stand tall, hold our arm out parallel to the floor. All right. And then we're just gonna swing it across our body like that. Apply a little pressure. So you get a nice stretch right here in your shoulders and your deltoid. Bring it back to the starting position. Two, three, four, five. Other side. One, two, three, four, five. Right, here we go. Almost done. The next one is called a thoracic spine side bend and twist. So again, using the golf club, we're gonna put it up over our head like that, all right? Arms nice and straight. And then we're just going to lean. We feel a nice stretch here in our lats right there, all right? We're gonna lean and then twist. Bring it back to the starting position, lean and twist, starting position, lean and twist, starting position, lean and twist. Last one, lean and twist. Other side, lean and twist, starting position, lean and twist, starting position, lean, and twist, starting position, lean and twist. Last one, lean and twist. Right. We just have one more exercise to do for the warm up in golf. And this one, we're gonna hold the golf club straight out in front, parallel to the floor, all right? And we're gonna do a modified golf swing. One, we can lift the heel, two, three, 
four, five. Other side, one, two, three, four, five. That's the warm up. It takes two and a half minutes for golf. So even if you're late getting to the golf course, all right? Hop on the cart with your other folks, get to the first hole, have the rest of the group tee off. You've got two and a half minutes to do those warm ups. Easy peasy, you can do that, all right? Now, for a cool down for golf, I like to concentrate on my shoulders, my arms and my wrists because honestly, I'm a terrible golfer. So I am swinging that club a lot. So I like to, when I get done, my arms, my shoulders, they're tired. So these are the exercises I chose because they work for me. However, if these don't apply to you, Google has a bunch of cool down exercises for golf um, that take less than five minutes. But anyway, let me show you these because they really have helped me. The first one is called a hip flexor stretch. And again, holding your arm out parallel, you're gonna bend that wrist fingers to the floor and you're gonna hold it for like 20 or 30 seconds. And you're gonna feel a nice stretch across the top of your forearm. I'm only gonna hold it for 10, one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and 10. Bring the arm down, relax a little bit. Now bring it back up because we've got more to do. We're gonna bend that wrist and the fingers are gonna to be to the sky. And we're gonna hold that uh, stretch for 20 seconds. And you're gonna feel a nice stretch on the lower half of your forearm. So let's count to 10, one and two three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and 10. And we're gonna do the other side. Parallel, little pressure on the wrist and we'll count to 10. One and two and three and four and five and six, seven and eight and nine and 10. You can shake it off if your arm gets tired. It probably will if you're holding it for 20 or 30 seconds. Yeah, let's do a 10 seconds here. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven, eight and nine and 10, All right? I have found that particular golf exercise really, really helpful. If some of you have experienced repetitive stress or the golfer's elbow or the tennis elbow, if you can do this consistently, you're gonna find that you minimize that, um, that issue. I found it helps me a lot, um, particularly since I do swing a lot. I exercise my arms and my shoulders a lot. So this is great for that golfer's elbow or tennis elbow, all right? So moving on to the other cool down exercise. The next one is what they call a pec stretch. So we're going to lift our arms up and we're gonna place our hands on the top of our back, just like that, right by the neck, all right? And then we're gonna take in a deep breath, pull those elbows back, feel a nice stretch across your chest, right? And then breathe out to the count of five. One and two and three and four and five. Bring it back to the starting position. Take a deep breath. Breathe out, one and two and three and four and five. Starting position, deep breath. Pull those elbows back, one and two and three and four and five, two more. Take a deep breath, pull those elbows back, one and two and three and four and five. Last one, take a deep breath. Pull those elbows back, one and two and three and four and five, all right? That's the pec stretch. And I'll tell you, that really helps me. My shoulders feel better. I'm not as tight across the front as I, I am when I finish playing 18 holes of golf, all right? And the last cool down is just a hamstring stretch. And again, you just want to keep this leg nice and straight, the forward leg, and you can lean in on a little bit. 
you just want a nice stretch right here and hold it for 20 or 30 seconds. I'm only gonna do 10 in the interest of time. One and two and three and four and five, six and seven and eight and nine and 10. And of course we've got to do the other leg. Nice and straight, feel that stretch. You can lean on your thigh a little bit and we'll do 10 seconds here. One and two, three and four and five and six and seven, eight and nine and 10. Done. And golf, really, these exercises only take two and a half minutes. You do have time, you can do this. And I, I tell you, I believe that your golf game will improve because mentally and physically, you're ready to approach that game because your body's warmed up, your mind is you know, all ready to go. So just try them and see how they work for you. Now, moving into the pickleball arena. We do a lot, not a lot of movement, but we are moving a bit. We're going forward, we're, we're going side to side, things like that. So the warm up exercises are broken into three sections. We're gonna do some cardio, and then we're gonna do some upper body warm ups, and then we're gonna do some lower body. And they take, they take five minutes and sometimes less. So if you get to the courts for the cardio, the cardio should be done two to three minutes at the most, okay? Um, you get to the courts, you could jog around the parking lot for a couple of minutes and get that heart rate and, uh, you know, and, and build up a little sweat. You could do a speed around the parking lot. You just wanna get your heart rate up and you wanna you know, start prepping your body for movement. And that's what the cardio was all about. So today, I'm just gonna do a minute of a warm up just to show you what you can do. Uh, today, I'm gonna to do a combination of fast feet and jumping jacks. And I'm, on, I'm not gonna do two to three minutes because uh, in the interest of time, but I'll probably do it like a minute. So let's start with some fast feet. Some jumping jacks. Some more fast feet. Jumping jacks, last one. Oh yeah, I'm huffing and puffing and I'm sweating a little bit. It's hot down here in South Carolina. All right, so now we're gonna start some upper body um, exercises for warm up. And the first one is arm circles. And there's two ways you can do this. First one would be do each arm separately and just arm circles two, three, four, five, reverse. One, two, three, four, five, other side. One, Two, three, four, five, reverse. One, two, three, four, five, all okay? right? The other way is you could do them together and just make circles, make them bigger. One, two, three, four, five, reverse. One, two, three, four, five. That takes care of the Arm circles. Now the second exercise is called a bent arm reach, all right? And basically, I want you to hinge the hips. I wanna keep that back nice and straight, okay? And then we're just gonna hinge it to hips, reach our arms to the floor, all right? And we can have a soft bend in our knees. And, and if you can't reach the floor, just hang on to your shins, all right? And what we're going to do is we're gonna lift that arm to the sky for five. One, two, three, four, five. Other side, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. 
We're getting those shoulders and arms, getting our back a little warmed up for, for pickleball, for all the movement that we're gonna be doing, all right? So that takes care of the bent arm stretch. The next one is gonna be a cross body stretch. And basically, we did this in golf a little bit. This one's gonna be modified in that we're gonna have our elbows up at 90 degrees. And the only joint we're going to move is our elbow joint. And we're gonna make circles, all right? So let's start. One, two, three, four, five. Reverse. One, two, three, four, five. And shake it off if your arms are tied, but bring them right back up because we got to do the wrists. So elbows at 90 degree, and then we're going to just do wrist circles. One, two, three, four, five. Reverse. One, two, three, four, five. And I knew I would forget. I'm only doing five or 10, but all these exercises that I'm showing you for pickleball should be at least 10 to 15 reps. So if I'm doing these elbow circles, you would do 10 one way, 10 the other to warm yourself up. And the same with the wrist, all right? All of these exercises, 10 to 15 reps each, all right? So we did the bend arm cross, we did the, and now we need to do the triceps, here we go. The triceps, we're gonna hold our arms out parallel like this. Then we're gonna swing them back to our body like so, all right? There's two ways we're doing this. You can do this. This is the first way. You could swing them and just touch the top of your back and you should feel a nice stretch right here, all right? So we'll do five of these. Three, four, five. Now, if you don't feel like you've gotten enough of a stretch for your triceps, we can do, we can swing our arms and touch our backs like so. Two, three, four, five. Again, 10 to 15 reps, but you do, I'm feeling it even with the five reps that I've done. I've gotten a nice, you know, they're getting nice and warmed up, all right? And the last one for the upper body is the torso twist. And it's like it sounds, we're gonna be twisting like that. And I don't want it you know, flopping around because you get no benefit. I want it a little bit more controlled and methodical because you can feel you know, the twist in your back and you're warming up your arms. So let's do 10. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. That takes care of the upper body um, exercises, warm-up exercises for pickleball. So now we wanna do the lower body, all right? And we did something similar with the golf, but the first lower body exercise I wanna do is they call it a straight leg hip circle. So I'm just gonna bring my leg out like so, and I'm gonna make circles. One, two, three, four, five. We're warming up that hip joint. Let's reverse it. One, two, three, four, five. All right, other side. Leg out and just make circles. One, two, three, four, Five, reverse, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. These take less than five minutes also. So maybe a little bit longer because we're doing 10 to 15, but it, it really you, it moves right along. So the next exercise we're gonna be doing is assisted squats. And by that, if you, if you need to use a wall or a fence or something for support or for balance, that's what they mean by assisted, all right? But we really don't need my golf club. So I'm just gonna do five squats, right? One, two, three, four, 
file. Now, if you were hanging on to a fence or a bench or something like that, all right, and you're down in the squat, you may have an inclination to kind of pull yourself up using your arms, but we've always warmed up, already warmed them up. We wanna warm up our legs. So I'm asking you, if you use an assisted like a fence or a bench, stand up with your legs. Don't pull yourself up using your arms because we wanna warm up those quads and, and legs, all right? So that takes care of the squat. The next one is called a butt kicker, all right? And that's gonna start warming up your hamstrings. So a butt kicker, basically what they want you to do is say it's your left leg. They want the heel of your left leg to touch the glute of your right leg. And it's gonna look something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If that doesn't, I mean, I feel a nice hamstring stretch right here, but if you feel like you need a little bit more, you can do what they call a double tap. And basically that's one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. Oh yeah, you can feel it right here, all right? Now remember, you're gonna be doing 10 to 15 of these butt kickers. So um, don't get too exuberant, all right? I feel a nice stretch just doing the singles, but some folks, they feel like they need a little bit more. Now, the next one, I do need my golf club because we're gonna do a quad swing. In golf, we did a quad swing, swinging our legs cross body, all right? Today, for the pickleball, we're going to do front to back. One, two, three, four, five, all right? Other side. One, two, three, four, five. All right. That takes care of the quads, all right? Again, 10 to 15, so you're gonna feel it, all right? I'm feeling it just with the five, like I said earlier. Now this one I think is very important and it's really important for pickleball because we do a lot of side to side motion, lateral motion. So this warm up I really like because it warms up the muscles in your inner thigh, all right? So basically you're gonna stand sort of tall, spread your legs out in a V fashion like so, all right? And then we're just gonna lean our, our weight onto one side, okay? And you're gonna start feeling stretches right here. And we're gonna do 10 to 15. I'm only gonna do 10, one. Side to side, two, feel that stretch, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? Nice stretch, and it really will be beneficial because we do a lot, particularly if we're in the kitchen or up near the net, you know, we do a lot, you know. So that I think is probably the, one of the more important ones that we do for uh, warm up, all right? So the next one we do is a calf stretch. And I'm just gonna pull over this box so that you can see it. And basically what I want you to do is go into an angled plank, all right? And then bring your feet back so that they're touching, your heels are touching the floor. And you can always, just that, your heels are on the floor you can feel a nice stretch in your calves, all right? So we're just gonna alternate bending our leg, bringing that heel up, bringing it back. Do the other leg, bring it up and bring that heel back. We'll do 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And the lower you go, you're gonna feel a nice, nice stretch. And I also like this stretch. It wasn't part of the group that they, they showed me, but this is a great stretch for the calves, your Achilles. If you find a post or a box in this case, and you just kind of lean, stand tall, and you're gonna feel 
your foot is angulated, angulated at, the, uh, at the bottom of the box, you can feel a nice stretch in that calf. And if you just hold it for 20 seconds, it's gonna feel really, really good. And keep those calves, the Achilles, everything that's down there, ankle nice and flexible and strong. And of course, we're gonna do the other side. We can just, just hold it for 20 seconds. And that's, I do that one a lot. And while I'm there, I might just circle my wrists, uh, ankles a little bit, you know, to get them really loose. So we did that. Honestly, it only takes five minutes to do those pickleball warm-ups. I tend to talk a lot, so I'm sure it took a little bit longer, but they can be done in five minutes or less. Now, for the cool down, rather than listening to me talk about some of the exercises, cool down exercises for pickleball, I thought I would show a video. So if um, someone could cue that up, watch the video, then come back and I can answer any questions. Why do people stretch yeah, after they play pickleball when the wine and a meal is ready? If you want to know the answer to that, just stay tuned. Hey everybody, my name is CJ Johnson. What do you do after you play pickleball? For most of us, the answer is perhaps have a glass of wine and go get something to eat. Let me suggest that before you do that, you add a little bit, less than five minutes worth of stretching to your routine. Here's what it'll do for you. It's gonna make your body feel better later on during the day, and it's gonna to help to add some mobility to your joints and your muscles so that the next time you go out and play pickleball, you're gonna feel even better. Here's a couple of stretches that you can do that'll take you, I promise, less than five minutes. Hold your arms straight out in front of you. Just above the elbow, gently pull it across your body. Then bend your arm, take it back, feel like you're reaching down the middle of your back. These are great for the trapezius, shoulder muscles, getting all of those nice and loose. Let's stretch out the chest just a little bit. Hold your arm at 90 degrees to the wall. You should feel a stretch in the front of your body in the pectoral muscle. Another great one for that area is clasp your hands behind your back and you can raise your shoulders just a little bit until you feel a stretch. Let's finish off with the neck. Roll side to side. Now don't forget to do these stretches on both sides of your upper body before you move to the lower body. Let's start with the little calves as well as hip flexors. Notice that the heel in the back is down. Moving over to the hamstring, gently push your butt back towards the wall. Reach down as far as you can till you get a stretch calves, tight calves, up against the wall, anything where you can lift the foot slightly forward. Moving on to the hip area, gently again, pulling that hip across the body. Use a wall to help to stabilize yourself or do it without for better balance. Again, just another version of a hip stretch. And while I'm up here, I might as well rotate and roll that ankle just a little bit side to side. Don't forget to go both directions. Lastly, just relax the back. I kind of let everything fall down and back up and see, finished in less than five minutes. Half the fun of playing pickleball is the socialization that we get during and after play. If you take just a few minutes before you go to socialize and do this little bit of stretching, I guarantee you that your body is going to feel better. <laughs> um, what I wanted to say, and I, I meant to do it in the very beginning um, with regard to my osteoporosis uh, diagnosis, it took a long, long time, but the combination of the medication, which I now don't need anymore, but the exercise, the weightlifting, I improved my diet and things like that. And I stopped the progression of osteoporosis. And it takes a lot of hard work. And, and the message that I want to impart is if you can do the work, you can get off the medication. Uh, that was my goal uh, because the medication is only good for a certain period of time. At least it was way back uh, 14 years ago for me. Um, so, 
it can be done. Does it take a lot of work and, and effort? It takes time and it takes consistency. I've been at CrossFit for 14 years um, and I have seen a world of difference in how I feel uh, physically and mentally. Uh, but the best news is, is that the osteoporosis is, is gone. I have stopped it and I am just tickled to death about that piece. And I found a sport that I really, really enjoy. Uh, I enjoy CrossFit. So um, if there are any questions or uh, suggestions that people want to share, uh, feel free. Thanks, Kathy. Right now we've got two uh, questions here. One from uh, Jermaine uh, from the very beginning, uh, who wants to know, what is CrossFit? Can you, yes. can you explain what yeah. that is? CrossFit is a bunch of functional fitness moves, okay? Basically, a squat is getting up and sitting down. That's a squat. Um, if you're putting something up on a shelf, that's a functional fitness move. In CrossFit, you, you would call that a push press and you're using a barbell of some weight or you're using dumbbells or something. Um, everything that we do is, is functional. We do, you know, yes, we do strength and, and I enjoy that challenge, but CrossFit primarily is functional fitness done, you know, sometimes at high intensity, it's interval training, so to speak. And we do a, a bunch of things very fast and then we slow down and, and, but it's all functional fitness, walking, running, lifting, standing, you know, squatting, uh, sitting, um, you know, picking things up off of the floor. You know, you're gonna pick up a, a dumbbell, so to speak. Well, there's an appropriate way to pick things up off of the floor so that you don't hurt your back. So that's basically what uh, CrossFit is. It's all about functional fitness, utilizing things like barbells or dumbbells to show us the appropriate way to say, pick up a bag of kitty litter, you know, or a, a bag of soil that you get at the nursery. Uh, so uh, I hope that answers your question. Thanks, Kathy. And then uh, Mary wants to know, can a CrossFit program be done virtually? Um, I have heard of it being done. Uh, but before I went virtual, I would strongly suggest, you know, going on site so that you can learn the appropriate techniques for doing certain lifting or even squatting. Um, and that's why I, I said earlier, they are certified coaches and they will show you the, the safe way, the appropriate way to do certain, uh, certain movements. So I have heard of it, but I, I wouldn't start that right away. I would go on site, learn the appropriate techniques, and um, then maybe I would do it. But the, the other good thing about uh, CrossFit um, is it's, it's a community. The classes tend to be smaller so that, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a nice community and you're exercising together. You're doing, you know, uh, things together um, and supporting one another. And that's one of the other benefits of a CrossFit gym is the support that you get from um, other members. Uh, when I went, uh, you know, I was, I was probably the oldest one there. And um, it was a little disconcerting, but everybody was so supportive. And even if I was the last one, which I usually was finishing, say, a timed workout, um, everybody was there to just support me and, and stayed until the very end. So um, I have heard of it, but I'm not all that familiar with it. Got it. Thanks, Kathy. Ty, I see you have your hand up. Did you have a question? Hi, thank you so much. Um, now, I am one that, you know, work, works out and I'm very, very active, whatever. But of course, osteoporosis caught, caught me, you know, surprisingly. So I have had some replacements and I wanted to know, because, you know, I'm reconditioning myself to get back into all the sports and I've been doing really good. Is there a specific type of a trainer? I mean, do you call them medical uh, trainers or something like that, that they can work with you. They know 
the exercises to do when you have rods, when you have replacements, as opposed to a personal trainer? Or would a personal trainer know how to work with me since I have these things? I, my, my experience, I work with, um, you know, a couple of trainers, they were all certified. Um, and they did work with folks that, that had um, some sort of ailment that, that, that they were recouping from and, and they would always take that into consideration. Um, so yes, however, you know, before I would do any of that, I would absolutely check with your doctor, your orthopedic doctor or whatever to make sure that this is an activity that would, you know, be good for you. But most of the trainers that I have worked with, um, they would do different things depending upon what issue you were dealing with. You know, um, I hope that answers your question. But I would be honest uh, when talking to that personal trainer, you know, I've had a hip replacement or, you know, what are the things that I need to do to, to keep myself safe and not uh, injure myself? And, and um, it would be a team effort. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, I would, I would also recommend if you're having specific problems, physical therapists are wonderful for showing you the right kinds of exercises and stretches. And you know, there's a lot of doctors that have started doing CrossFit. Um, and if you could find a CrossFit uh, affiliate that, that has doctors that come in and do CrossFit, like I, you know, at my gym, there was an emergency room doctor that would come in every morning and, you know, he would be doing his, his workout and, oh, yeah, of course we peppered him with questions, um, but he was a medical MD, but there's, there's doctors at certain gyms and I'm not familiar with them, but I know there are certain CrossFit gyms where they do have medical personnel on their staff. Obviously, they're probably a larger gym than my gym, which is very small, but um, I would go on to the CrossFit um, website and see if you could find something. I put the uh, CrossFit.com link into the uh, chat. Is that the website you're talking about, Kathy? Yes. Yeah. Good. And, um, and do they have a Oh, they have a find a gym button there. So it looks like that's an association where you can find a local CrossFit uh, gym place. All right. Let me see if we have anything else in the chat. How often do you get to play pickleball and do golf and things I, like that? Um, I, I, well, <laughs> uh, pickleball has kind of got my attention. So um, I haven't been playing a lot of golf, but... Uh, um, I'm at the gym five days a week and I probably pay pickleball two to three times a week. So it keeps me pretty busy. Excellent. Yeah. We have a question here from Janice. Uh, she's asking how have your bone density scans been? She says she also has osteoporosis, um, doesn't take meds, uh, but she does lightweight training and her scans have been stable. She's 73. Ah, that's great. Um, my latest um, bone density uh, told me that I had osteopenia. I no longer have osteoporosis. I've stopped the progression. So for my age, I have osteopenia, but it's, it's, I'm not on any meds. I, I can lift some pretty heavy weights um, at this point in my you know, career with CrossFit. Um, and it does not impact my lower back at all. I've done you know, 200 pound deadlifts. Um, and you shouldn't be using your back anyway when you deadlift, but it hasn't impacted me. Um, you know, I feel fine. I can, I can lift a lot of heavy things like, you know, 40 pounds of kitty litter with no issue whatsoever. So I feel like my bone structure is in better shape than it was when I was in my late fifties. Um, Sandy uh, is saying that she's also been diagnosed with osteopenia um, and she would like to do these exercises, but will never remember them all. And she's asking if there's anywhere that she could find diagrams of these or pictures um, that she could Yes, find. Um, all of these. In fact, I think somebody was going to share the links that I, I mean, for the, the golf warm up, there's a link and uh, there's a video that goes along with it. 
you could use. And then for the pickleball, it was a PowerPoint presentation. And it, it was very specific about how to do the certain exercises and had pictures. Uh, so yeah, if the, I believe we, we put those links in. Yeah, and I just I pasted it earlier and I just put it back in the chat for anyone who okay. didn't get a chance to grab it. Yeah, and, and really Google is your friend. I, um, I had a lot of fun. Uh, I chose these uh, exercises that I showed today because they were five minutes or less. But um, there's a bunch out there. Uh, you know, I guess that's a very frequent reason for people not warming up is that they don't have time. So um, um, it, it was really kind of a lot of fun just to see the different exercises that you could do in less than five minutes to get your body ready. And, and, and if I could impart anything, it's you should not start any activity cold. You're just going to, it's a recipe for injury. Um, your body's just not ready for that kind of activity, no matter what it is you're doing. So, you know, just doing a few warm up exercises will make all the difference in the world and minimize your risk for injury. And at my age, I want to minimize that a lot because bouncing back from an injury, no matter how minor, it just seems to take a long time. And I don't want to be held up. Yes, I went to my doctor Monday and he told me that my left knee had to be operated on because I had the right knee done in 2008. So what exercise could I do to try to minimize that um, from having that uh, total knee replacement? Well, first I would probably talk to my doctor and, and um you know, I know for some knee replacements, they, they are prior to having a knee replacement, they have you go through some sort of a boot camp, which strengthens everything around that particular joint so that your recovery from that surgery is, is a little bit easier. Um, maybe you could talk to your doctor about, you know, maybe having some, you know, physical therapy done on that, you know, that particular knee to strengthen everything you know, around that particular knee um, or find yourself a personal trainer. Um, but again, check with your doctor first um, to make sure that whatever you do is going to be okay. Because uh, my left knee looked like the bone to the uh, bottom of my elbow looked like it's coming in like this. Okay. Mm. Uh, I think probably talking to your doctor and getting a recommendation for say PT to strengthen that area would be your best bet uh, to do. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Do we have any other questions for Kathy? Give Kathy a big thank you. This was wonderful. Thank you, I enjoyed it. I hope to see Thank everybody at another time.